It's just been so great to see the message of Switch kind of grow and evolve, and I think that's really reflected in, in who attends the event. For four years, we've been bringing energy and sustainable, sustainability professionals together to kind of challenge our thinking about how we move, how we, how we generate, how we move, how we use energy, and tonight's lineup is, is no different. Can I get the keys? <laughs> there we go. Is it on? This thing is quiet. Let's, oh, it's one of those key fobs. Let's turn this thing on. Ooh, that is pretty. Look at that. Looks like it's charged up, ready to go. Plenty of range. It'll take me to and from work, pick up the kids, pick up some pizza on the way home. I'm ready to go. Let's put this thing in the drive. Whoa! The acceleration on this thing is incredible. A whale is 20 barrels of living, swimming oil. Bit strange. It is a biofuel. But even if we were to populate the entire Mediterranean Ocean with whales, at one whale per square mile and 20 barrels of oil per whale, we would supplant less than 1% of our current fossil oil usage, which highlights our intense energy appetite and nature's limitations in providing. Uh, what if we can have a transition away from fossil fuels that's actually really good for the utility and, the rate and their shareholders, and good for the ratepayers, and also good for the climate? Um, this leads me to my favorite John Oliver quote, which is, if you want to do something evil, hide it inside something boring. <laughs> which, like, like depreciation spreadsheets. What's going to happen is we're going to have Russian molecules are going to be pushed back, and Marcellus molecules are going to make their way into Europe. We all know the Ukrainian crisis and the price gouging that took place with that, and no one likes gas problem. 2016 is going to be the first year that more power uh, as a nation is generated by natural gas than for coal. And, and he wants to remind me, Leslie, coal is what we did in the 1800s. Why don't you just talk about efficiency and renewables like everybody else? Well, then we're 54% coal in 2015. Uh, on June 1st of 2006, as you'll see a, a carbon map of the planet there. You'll see a lot of high intensity red in the northern atmosphere, which shows uh, you know, approaching 400 parts per million throughout the northern hemisphere. One month later, gone. 30 parts per million lost over on average over the entire northern hemisphere, and that was just from the budding of, and growing of trees in that one month. Net zero energy building use, it produces as much energy on site through renewables as it uses, and this is essentially uh, enabled by a number of different things. Why are we able to sort of do this now that we weren't able to do it before? The one thing is that um, there's been this sort of steady progression of energy codes over the years, um, and uh, I guess I'll adapt a quote. If you want to do something wonderful, hide it in the energy codes, right? It's a silly metric because net zero energy is like deciding uh, how much food you should eat uh, by, just by seeing how much food is in your fridge. Is that right? My name is Colin Lamb. <clears throat> and uh, I work at a utility. <laughs> we don't do consumer technology very well, right? Like we push out uh, power over big lines, we burn coal, that kind of thing. Uh, but this is a way that we could potentially work with customers. They're out there, they're buying nests, they're giving them to their friends for, for Christmas. Uh, that just blows our mind. So the potential to have this really mutually beneficial relationship between EVs and utilities. Not unlike the relationship between peanut butter and jelly, which separately are good, but put them together. Our current trend gets us to about 2% EV sales in 2040. To get to a sustainable transportation system, we need that to be 75%. When we want to get somewhere, we have to kind of move fast. That natural gas, it's good stuff, but too much of it. So let's make sure. We will have Just bears worth repeating. Uh, if you want to do something evil, uh, hide it inside of something boring. Um, which I, I think that the converse exactly applies to, to switch and the work that, uh, that we're doing every day, right? So uh, if we don't hide it in, it in, in anything boring. Why is that? Because we're, we're a force for good and doing something uh, to better this world. So um, thanks to the presenters. A couple of final thank yous uh, to our, our sponsors, uh, Clean Result, Excel, uh, Navigant, Green, uh, Green Eyed Mo uh, Motors, and Powder Keg Brewery. Thanks for that. And uh, I do want to take a minute and acknowledge the uh, ASP and the team of uh, Switch Volunteers. So if you could stand up if you're a Switch Volunteer, you're wearing the shirt. Uh, <laughs>